Hey guys, so I just kind of wanted to show you Velvet there. She's chilling out, um, hanging out in my craft room while I'm crafting. And as you can see, she's got all sorts of toys everywhere. Um, and I've got her heater vent covered so that she doesn't get too warm. Um, and usually I'll put a wet washcloth over that just to kind of give her some humidity. Because bunnies get very staticky in the winter. Anyways, I just wanted to do a quick little Velvet video and show you her chilling there and we're gonna get beating in just a minute hi guys welcome back so in the last video we worked on this pendant and we put in the gold and did that and then we worked on this necklace and so I sat here and I started designing um, for this pendant because I really wanted to do something with this pendant and I came up with this green necklace. Um, I pulled out a um, necklace drop, um, fancy one. And then um, in doing it, I also pulled out some spacer beads that I had. I don't remember where I got these from. But I thought it went really well with the theme for, like, lily pads. Um, and so I've got my... Um, bead caps here that are going to go on these little beads here. Um, I haven't decided what's going to go past there yet, but um, I thought we could go ahead and start stringing this up. And I know this is going to hang low um, because of the fact that it's um, a large, it's got a large millimeter hole and I've got a bunny at my feet. I'll be right back guys. All right, sorry about that, guys. She just needed a cookie. Um, velvet's at my feet again. Um, but I didn't have any in the craft room. So I had to go get a box, and you guys didn't need to hear me go rough, you know, rifling through stuff. This is not coming off. This is going to drive me. I Sometimes I hate the fact that they tape this stuff because this does not come out very easy. Um, and in trying to do it, I just don't want to cut the wire, but I don't, there we go. Cutting the tape worked. All right. So anyways, I may want to take and put some bead in there, maybe a two or three millimeter spacer bead. I'm going to find just a couple of little couple of little spacer beads here because I definitely don't want um, that bead and I don't know if I need one um, one might do let's see so all I'm doing here is just trying to make sure that if I have that 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 drop is going to be centered and I think one bead is fine so we'll just leave it at that um, cause if you've, if you've got a large whole bead, um, and, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So if I didn't have that bead in there and I had my, um, necklace thing in there, it's going to, like, unless you do it super tight, it's going to hang down much lower than the other beads. And then when you look at it, you're going to see the big gaping hole. You'd have to do these super tight to get it to lock in. But by adding that spacer bead um, and just going back through there. Now, even if I don't have it super tight, right, I can have my beads somewhat loose and it's going to be raised up um, just a little bit above you know, so it's going to look like it belongs there and I can have it loose and it'll flip around um, rather than having to have it locked in so tight that it's not really going to go anywhere. Um, and you do want your beads to be able to move. All right, so we're going to string up these. I have a feeling I'm going to go through this kit in the next day. Um, doing designs because I just I'm absolutely loving these 
Um, you know, I think that looks fabulous. I think that just screams lily pad to me. I'm going to do my other side here. Try to get my cord from untangling. Um, and see, I would never, if I go to the store, I would never have thought to bought, you know, to buy these colors um, just because not my normal. But in seeing them together in my beading tray, I absolutely fell in love with them. Um, just loving, you know, just loving that. Now, I like that. I really do because that gives me enough gold. It makes it fancy. I'm going to put on, I'm going to try this again. I don't know if I'm going to like this. I just wanted to have a little bit more gold in between um, on these little beads. And this just might be just a tiny bit. Um, you know, that's, yeah, I think that's fine. I like that. Just enough to kind of, and we don't need a big one, um, give it a little bit of an accent on those, like, light green beads just because they're not super bright so they kind of you know next to these brighter greens they kind of looked kind of blah um all right so there's that and we will string up the next set i'm really liking this um I think that's going to be beautiful. Um, I like the fact that these spacer beads are, you know, these bead caps are so big that they add, you know, quite a bit of, of space to it that they're about a half inch. Um, and again, I've only done two sets on each side. Because I need to see how long it's going to be and determine if I have enough beads to do um, how many more sets before I have to go to my, um, you know, to a different, what I call pattern. All right. What I like doing... Um, and I know, I've, I think I've said this before in other videos, what I like to do on the back of the neck, because, again, nobody's going to see the back of the neck. Um, you get, you know, you, you can put your fancy pretty beads, and I do sometimes if I have plenty of them. But a lot of times I don't want to waste, you know, the really good beads, you know, on something that nobody is going to see. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um... You know, or you do, or or do opt for chain because it's gonna sometimes just doing chain to finish up a necklace because you don't have enough beads. It, to me, it detracts sometimes from you know your your ultimate design. You know that you know, again. I'm just trying to make it fun, um, elegant something that you know people would want to purchase something that i would want to wear a lot of times i don't sell these things um if you ever go to my shop and you look at what's actually for sale versus how much i make there's a lot that's not listed because i tend to keep it and you know i joke i'm like i have a necklace for every day of the year <laughs> um which i probably do like if i were to wear everything that i make in these videos and what I've made before starting these videos, I literally would have a necklace for every day of the year. Oh, I'm loving this. All right, I think I'm gonna do another set. I've gotta be careful because I don't have a ton of these beads. So that could be a problem and i don't remember where i've where i got them from so that's even bigger of a problem 
because I don't know what they are called. They're bell shape or tulip shape or something spacer beads and I would have to go searching. Um, I don't know if I got them in a kit. That could also be a problem that if they came in one of these boxes or something that I got as a mix, um, that would, you know, I may not be able to get them again. So we've got to be careful that I don't run out before I finish. Because I also think I want to make a necklace or an, a pair of earrings to go with this. I don't have any. I wish I had some smaller dragonfly, um, you know, pendants or charms that were in this color. Because that would, that would look awesome to do a bell, a dark green, and a little dragonfly hanging from it. Um... I don't think I have any dragonfly charms. Uh, no, I don't. Actually, I used them all. Because I do make dragonfly earrings um, to sell. That one's got something funky on it. So I don't know if you can see that. It's got... I don't know. It looks like... I don't know. Something melted onto it. All right, so we've got to do our small beads and Oh, I love this. I'm so excited. Oh yeah, see that's already going to go all the way around the neck. Um, I think that's perfect. So we've got one, two, three sets on each side. I think I'm going to... I'm just trying to think where's my dragonfly going to sit. I want... I need to put on... So what I think I'm going to do, just to finish up these sides, is I'm going to do another set of this being the bigger bead with the bead cap and then a little green bead and then do that on the other side because that's going to give me a roughly half a little over half inch which may be enough may not um But if it's not super, if it's not long enough, I can always add a extender chain. Um, that will get me the length that I need. So I'm just kind of holding this up as if I have it clasped on my neck. And then just kind of holding the pendant up to where I think it's going to be. And that's actually perfect size. So with that being said, I'm going to take my silver crimp beads and I'm going to put them back in the bag or a bag and then we are going to pull out the crimp beads that came with the kit the lobster claws and I am going to get a Wire Guardian, although I just noticed something on these lobster claws that I got. If you look, there's one right there that's sticking out in front of the... It's sticking out in front of its... where it's supposed to go. So I don't think that's going to go back into its space. I think this one's a dud. And again, that's why I always tell people, and I think I said this in a previous video, check your lobster claws because sometimes, just sometimes, you get them and like this is, it's jammed. That one's, that one's just not even going anywhere. 
Um, that one works. That one works. And that one works. So this one, completely jammed, completely stuck, ain't going anywhere, so it goes in the trash. Um, unfortunately, that happens. You know, as much as, as these bead boxes are great, you know, manufacturing, they can't help manufacturing defects, and I highly doubt they would go and check every lobster claw that they come across. Um, that would just be way too prohibitive um, for them to ship out. So, I always check just because I don't want to... Um, and I don't know if this is going to go over that. Yeah, see, that won't go over my wire guardian. So I am just going to crimp this, and then I will use a jump ring. Um, I like using the wire guardians more than not. Like, I will occasionally not use them. But I like using them just because it gives me an extra extra amount of security on these wires oops sorry about that and didn't mean to hit the camera um still trying to get used to this new setup here um so part of the problem is the over the table setup actually covers part of the screen so I don't always see exactly where everything is showing up in the camera um, that I can see yes you can see my table but I don't always see what you're seeing and while I do some video editing I don't um, I don't watch the whole thing because, you know, if I have an hour, if I'm doing an hour of recording and then an hour of, you know, watching to make sure that everything was on screen, well, I can't remake the jewelry. I'm not going to cut it apart and remake it for the video. So I just kind of take the whole video and add my intro, add my outro that I created and... um hope for the best sometimes. <laughs> All right, so I've got a crimp in that. That's not good. Um, so I've got my necklace, and I'm going to set this tray out of the way for just a minute here, because the one thing I need to make sure of is that all of these tulip beads are nice and snug and secure in in there before crimping down and I've got plenty of space here to pull tight um, just because I don't want it super tight so that the necklace won't bend but I also don't want to have you know big gaps like that in there um, because that will cause issues um, when it comes to doing your, and see that's still a little loose for what I want. That may be... Okay. Um. All right, there we go. And I am going to grab. I just bought these. They're Zuron and they're tweezer nose pliers. 
These are the most fabulous things that I think I own now. Um, they are my favorite set of pliers because they're tiny and they can get into tiny spaces. Um, and they're great for the wire, but they're also, um, they're also great for crimping down beads in tight places. And, um, yeah. So, all right. So we've got the necklace. I'm going to grab a, um, spacer chain here if I have the right color gold. I just got my spacer chains in too. Um, bought some spacer chains off of Amazon. Um, so true story for you. So I bought some chains off of Amazon and um, usually I get sterling silver, or I get not sterling silver, but I get stainless steel and then they're colored. And I bought some chains that I expected to be gold, like yellow gold, and then rose gold, and copper, and bronze, and silver. And they call them colorful. So I was like, okay, you know, I've seen them called that many, many times. And so I ordered them. They get here. And I open up the package, and I'm looking at these this these spacer chains and they're yellow and red and pink and gray and navy and I'm like that is not um that is not what I was expecting for spacer chains for jewelry because they were just literally unusable they looked like they were plastic um and so they went back and then I bought I went back and looked through my orders and found the, the exact ones that I had bought previously that were stainless steel and ended up ordering those um, to come in. So they're stainless steel with, you know, gold plating and stainless steel with copper plating. Um, they were a little more expensive. So if you're buying stuff off of Amazon, and I did put a review out there. I gave it a one star um, and said, buyer beware. These are not what you're you're thinking um, because they definitely did not match the picture. Um, oh, Jude. Oh, get back here. Um, so... Yeah, so just be, just be forewarned that if you buy stuff... Amazon, AliExpress, you may not get what you think you're going to get. Um, anyway, all right, so now we've got our lobster claw and extender chain on. Now to put on our um, pendant. And so what I'm going to do on this, just to make sure that pendant is super secure, and this is... Um, something that will help you because now um, if you're trying to put on a and this pendant's kind of weight it's it's not super heavy but it's weighty um, I don't want the jump rings to fail so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a um, jump ring on and it doesn't really matter which direction you put that on to be honest because you know, re in reality, this is just going to, oh, goodness, I've got the dropsies tonight. All right, let's try this again. <laughs> yeah. Problem is, is getting, getting your jump ring situated and holding onto it super tight there we go. So once you get the first one on, it's really easy. So while I could go with just a single jump ring there and have it, I mean, that's pretty secure. Thing is, though, is I'm not taking any chances with this because I love this pendant and I love this necklace. I'm going to add a second jump ring if I don't get the dropsies. Um, and make sure you don't overlap them. You want them side by side. Um, and I'll show you in a second here once I'm able to close this guy. 
So what you want to do is you want to get them side by side and when it, it's hanging there, as you can see, you've got your two jump rings and it makes it, it makes it a little more finished, a little, a little nicer. And if one of the jump rings starts to fail, the other one's going to be secure. So anyways, there is the dragonfly necklace. And now to see what that looks like on a mannequin, let me grab my, my bust here. And we're going to hang this guy on there. And so hanging it on a neck, it's going to hang like that. I absolutely love this, minus the bunny fur. Um, so yeah, I think it's sparkly. I think it's elegant. I love the gold with the green. Um, and so there's necklace number two from the curated bead box, uh, ponds and lily pads. So let me know what you think about this in the description and I will see you in the next one. So thanks for watching.